been a pretty cool conference thus far. Um, I've had a lot of fun preparing this talk. I've been uh, supported all the way by magical software. Mysterious disappearing fonts in OpenOffice was a, a highlight, um, but I managed to solve that one. Um, okay, so this is uh, about telepathy. Um, it's quite an old project now. We've been uh, working for three years on things. Um, we've got a lot of software together, and what we're really trying to do now is promote using telepathy to people who write applications, um, want to write things using instant messaging, voice over IP, collaborative applications, and do cool stuff on uh, desktop and mobile devices. Um, so my name is Robert McQueen. I'm one of the directors of Collabora Limited, um, an open source consultancy. We do uh, real-time communications, uh, multimedia, graphics, 3D, window managers, widget sets, applications, uh, business cards available later. Um, so I'm just going to give an overview of telepathy. Um, who here kind of knows what, what telepathy is or not? And who kind of needs the introduction? Uh, okay, I'll try and make the introduction quicker. <laughs> Um, so maybe you've seen these slides before. Um, so one of the ideas behind telepathy is to uh, to kind of go back to the Unix way of, of separating things apart. Um, the intermessing client on, on today's desktop, you know, looking at um, Pigeon or Capit, um, you have this one monolithic application which is responsible for doing a large number of uh, different things. You can split down into the user interface code, which you know some guys would be good at doing UI design, implementing that. Some guys would be good at writing protocol code, reverse engineering in some cases, implementing standards, ideally. Um, but actually, these programs end up doing a whole load of separate tasks. Um, you have a whole load of different protocol implementations on the back end, and uh, you have a whole load of different functions on the front end, and your nice program turns out to get quite complicated, and you have all of these different modules and things, and you end up with very, very large code bases. Um, so the idea of telepathy is that we can actually make a more modular approach, uh, and we can end up with um, separate processes which take care of some of those different responsibilities. Um, the protocols themselves run as um, background services on your desktop. Uh, they don't have any UI on them, um, and they expose a standard API which you can use through IPC to implement the functionality that you want in your front ends. Um, so the API provides everything you need to do presence, messaging, media, collaborative applications, and things. So you get an architecture that looks more like this. Uh, we use the Dbus IPC system, which is the standard on the Linux desktop, and uh, becoming more popular for embedded devices based around Linux. Um, so each of these backends runs as a separate process and exposes the standard telepathy API over Dbus. And then your different uh, UI processes be they one process, multiple separate processes, can use these uh, connections over the standard API. Um, so this brings us back to having uh, each component do one thing, do it well. Um, the guys who like staying up all night looking at MSN uh, you know, debug dumps, writing crazy soap stuff, um, making that work, are not people who are necessarily good at writing great UIs or integrating stuff into the desktop or you know, writing a media player, this kind of thing. So we can split this apart. People can focus on what's good, uh, what they're good at, and do the best they can. Um, this means that, because uh, it's a modular system, we have these reusable components. Uh, you can actually um, just take one telepathy backend, use it just to invent that protocol, or you can take you know, a, a running desktop system with lots of backends, and then you don't have to care about the protocol, this kind of thing. So you can mix and match and use different bits of telepathy depending on what you want to do. It means that the user interfaces can be uh, different or domain specific. So you can have a user interface tailored to a particular device or a particular desktop um, or whatever you're doing. Um, another cool thing that telepathy brings uh, by having the connections available on Dbus is that you can share the connections between multiple processes. Uh, so previously, if you had Pigeon and you had you know, logged into five IAM things, Pigeon has a kind of Dbus API. It's kind of crazy, but it basically remote controls the whole Pigeon UI. So if you start a chat, a chat window appears. You can't do something like take the messages from a chat and do something with them by yourself. Um, and so you, you get this very kind of, and also that API is specific to Pigeon. If you want to show presence, you have to pull it out of Pigeon. Um, whereas ideally what you want to do is have a standard API, uh, these connections can be found by any process on your desktop. You can start a file transfer here. You can join one chat room per web page that you're on. 
stuff like that. Um, another thing that Dbus gives us is flexibility about how you implement these components. Um, you can have a mixture of uh, closed source UIs or closed source backends, open source, this kind of thing, because everything plugs together through this standard API over Dbus. So there are process boundaries if you want. Or if you're resource constrained, you can actually recompile with a bit of hackery most things as a library and speak to yourself over the local socket. Yeah. Um, so um, the most important thing that, that, that the Telepathy project has made, um, as well as lots of cool software, uh, is the DBS API, um, because that's how everything fits together. So if you take nothing from, from what we've done other than the DBS API, and you can interoperate with the things that we've got, um, that's still cool. So we're trying to make uh, basically the, the de facto standard for this is how you plug front ends, back ends, IM, presence, all this stuff together. Um, we've implemented several protocol backends, as I'll talk about in a second. Um, and also, we maintain, uh, with various levels of success, um, a lot of uh, client bindings for the Telepathy API. Um, so, uh, either to help you implement backends or to help you use them. So, the backends we have, um, the kind of oldest ones are Gabble and Salu, which are a pair of backends for um, server based and link local XMPP. Over the coming year, we're actually planning to merge these together so that we have um, one, uh, one place where all of our XMPP protocol code lives. So you can do things like file transfer and voice calling, whether or not you're on a local network or um, uh, on using a server. Uh, we have a SIP backend uh, contributed by Nokia uh, based on Sophia SIP, which is the SIP library that they open sourced. Um, we have a MSN backend called Butterfly. Um, again, contributed by the, the community. Uh, there's a few guys in Conabra who hack on it as well. Um, that's based on the PyMSN library. Um, Idle is an ISE backend, which uh, originally came from Nokia. We maintain it at the moment. Um, and from Google Summer of Code, um, we have a, a project called Haze, um, which uses the libpurple library from Pigeon. And through a variety of interesting hacks, makes available all of the protocols there to sort of basic level of functionality. Um, so here's some example code, which uh, I can step through and hopefully introduce some of the telepathy concepts. Um, so this is written in Python, and the benefit of doing examples in Python is that the, the DBus bindings for Python have a very close mapping between the code that you write and the DBus API that you're using. So when you write, you know, proxy.foobar in DBus Python, you are calling the foobar method. There's no kind of smoke and mirrors or strange types and things. The, the mapping between the IPC and the actual methods that you're calling is, is very simple. Um, so the example logs into a server and sends a message to a contact. Um, first things first, not a lot of excitement here. Uh, we need a main loop because um, we do things asynchronously. So we use the GeoTrip main loop and we use the DBus uh, glib binding so that um, the mes me messages are processed DBus messages are processed from the, the glib main loop. Um, the telepathy packages provides uh, various constants and interfaces and the actual client's helper code that we've got. Um, so each telepathy connection manager on your system, uh, unless it's kind of dynamic and you uh, changes its ability at runtime, usually provides a dot manager file, uh, which gives you a kind of registry of what's available in the system, what protocols do I have, what options do they need. Um, so Telepathy Python has this manager registry, which you can fire up and tell it to pass these files. Um, but it may also do the dynamic discovery, because some things like uh, Haze can change what they do, depending on which libpurple plugins you have installed, um, which is kind of crazy. So we can't write a file that says what it can do. We have to start it and then ask it, and it can tell us. Um, to create uh, connection objects, you need a dictionary of parameters. Um, so the basic configuration, you have an account name, you have a password. Um, we can get a proxy for Gabble, which is the XMPP connection manager from the manager registry. And then we can request a connection object. Um, so this square bracket syntax here um, is obviously the Python uh, dictionary syntax. But in Telepathy Python, we use it to access different interfaces on a Telepathy object. Um, so we've overloaded that. And you just put in the name of the interface. So these are, all, these are constants from Telepathy Python. And you plug it in here and say, I want to access the connection manager interface on the manager object. So we call the request connection method. We want a Jabber connection. And we send in our parameters there. 
And this gives us two things, which is the dbus bus name and the object path exported by that service um, for a connection object. And then we can make a new connection proxy by just plugging those two in, and it gives us this. Um, so usually when you're using telepathy, um, the connections that you create are not created by your program. So this example is simplified because it creates its own connection. What you do usually is ask a separate service, which I'll talk about later, um, what accounts do you have, please give me a connection, and then you'd start at this point in the kind of ideal world. Um, so these processes can export multiple connections. So in Gabble, you can create two connection objects, and you'll have you know, test at Gmail, test at example. You could also run um, the butterfly backends and log into some MSN accounts. Uh, so the connection object itself, once you're online, has a number of different interfaces that are enabled or disabled depending on what the service can do. So if you have a service that has presence, for example, I mean most IAM services do, um, then we have an interface which lets you see um, who's available, who's busy, this kind of thing, and to set your own presence. Um, Edit is another pretty standard functionality. So you can say, uh, you know, set my edits to this, find out what people have called themselves. Um, and again, avatars. A little bit more complicated because fetching the avatar is quite a slow and expensive thing. Um, but most protocols implement a kind of avatar token, which they'll give you, which we can um, retrieve cheaply or gets pushed to you. So you, you get tokens from the avatar interface, and then if, you're, if you see that it's a different token, you can request the avatar. And then to do the rest of the communication, then the connection objects give you channel objects, which actually take care of doing the communication. Um, so I mentioned earlier that um, everything is asynchronous. So the reason behind this is that the telepathy connection managers are doing network I.O. and they themselves also are asynchronous and they have to send stuff off to the server, wait for responses to arrive before they can answer your uh, method calls in some cases or you know, give you signals to tell you that stuff has happened. So you do a lot of the stuff in telepathy by um, hooking to signal callbacks or making asynchronous calls to um, functions in the back end. Um, so the two signals on the connection interface, one is status changed, which is pretty obvious. It tells you whether you're uh, disconnected, connecting, or connected. And new channel tells you when some new communication is, has arrived and you have some new stuff to process. Um, so once we've hooked these signal callbacks, then we push the button and uh, we start connecting. Then we can go into the main loop and we wait for the connection manager to do its stuff and hopefully it should kick off one of these signals. Um, so we have a, a callback for this um, status change callback. If we're not connected yet, don't do anything. And if we are, then we can start doing the actual communication. Um, so the next slide uh, talks a bit about this, but um, handles represent something you can communicate with in telepathy, um, which could either be a group of contacts, or it can be a contact list on the server, or it can be a chat room, or it can be a contact. So we have these different namespaces for handles. Um, and those are integers. Now, people think that, that handles are supposed to be some kind of optimization. Um, they are, but not in the obvious way. Um, handles are integers for the purpose of you being able to compare them without asking the connection manager. So the guarantee is if the connection manager gives you two handles that are the same number, you know that that's the same person. Um, because otherwise, your client would have to embed some knowledge about how to compare different identifiers or different protocols. And you're not supposed to be able. To, you're not supposed to have to know that to use telepathy. Um, so, for example, the Jabber IDs, there's case folding, there's UTF-8 uh, string prep, and you have to chop off the source and all this kind of stuff. So the connection manager does all that for you. If you get the same number, you know it's the same person. Um, it's not about reducing what we send over the bus. Um, that's more about round trips, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. So once we have a handle for the contact, uh, you know, desk.examples.com, um, we get an array back which has handles and uh, we take the first member, which gives us this uh, integer handle. We can put that into the request channel method. We want a text channel with a contact with this handle. Um, so we call that, and again, that's asynchronous. So we call this, and what we want to do is wait for the new channel signal to tell us that that's actually happened. So as I said, handles represent contacts, or chat with more contact list, whatever. Contacts are most interesting and we create a text channel with a handle to start communicating. Um, so channels have different type, 
uh, different types. DBus doesn't actually have an inheritance system. Um, one particular DBus object can just implement any interfaces. Um, but what we do in telepathy is define that uh, something which is a channel object will have one channel type interface, and then it might have some other interfaces. So there's a base channel interface, and there's channel type text, for example, which lets you send and receive uh, IMs. So there's a method which is send, shockingly, and a signal which is received, which tells you when something's come in. Um, so back to the example, in the new channel callback, then um, if it's not a text type channel, then it's probably a contact list, so we can ignore it. If it is, then we've been given the object path, and some other information about the channel. But actually, we know the service name already because we're already talking to the connection object. So we can put that in, put in the object path, and get a channel object. And then um, we can plug in uh, the interface that we want, which is text on the channel proxy, call the send method, a normal type message, hello world. Uh, so that's it. That'll log in, uh, open a channel with one person, send up one message. Um, I would run it for you, but I forgot to actually save it into file. Sorry, it does work. Ask Marco for it, I'm sure he's got it. <laughs> um, so one of the sort of big uses of telepathy, um, certainly we, we wrote it uh, in, in partnership with Nokia to uh, provide the real-time communications for the MIMO platform. So the Nokia internet tablets uh, come out of the box with telepathy um, for the back ends, and Nokia have provided their own UI with their own look and feel uh, that use the telepathy back ends. This is cool because you can actually go and download all the other backends we've got. You can get MSN and you know ICQ, IRC, Yahoo, whatever, um, and you can install them. And then the, the built-in Nokia UI, which is well designed, looks good, um, nice look and feel, and integrates well with the device, suddenly gains the ability to do all these other uh, other protocols. So that's the uh, the Nokia UI there. Um, another component which Nokia contributed and that uh, we, we've started hacking on recently as well um, is this mission control component. So earlier in the talk I said that um, you don't usually create a connection yourself. Uh, the reason for this is that if everyone created a connection then it w there wouldn't be anyone who was listening to the connection for incoming events making sure that there was a UI showing for anything that uh, was sent into you. Um, and also there wouldn't be any single place to store all of the account settings. You don't want every program to have its own account dialog box putting in its own settings, and then you have multiple connections, the same thing. User has to enter things multiple times. It's just a, a fail event. So um, Mission Control is responsible for centralizing the things that need to be centralized. And that basically breaks down to managing the accounts that you have and starting the connection managers. So if you tell Mission Control, OK, let's go online, it has an interface where you can configure the accounts and it sets them all online, and it monitors um, those connections for incoming events. Then the other half of its responsibility is activating what we call the channel handlers, which take care of a particular um, uh, launching a particular process when channels arrive. Um, the kind of flip side of that is requesting channels. So if you are, for example, the address book, you can see a contact, you want to chat with them, but you're not actually a chat UI then the kind of fire and forget way, you just tell Mission Control, OK, here's a guy, I want to chat, make the chat appear. And that follows a lot of the same code paths as dispatching the incoming events, because again, it'll request the channel, and once it has it, it needs to make sure that your chat UI is launched. So just stepping through that, um, using these screenshots from the um, MIMO desktop uh, as an example, the first thing you start with is this presence icon. So this is not a telepathy component, it's a UI component which Nokia have provided. And you can ask it to put you online. It does that by starting mission control and requesting a particular presence. So here you select the online presence and mission control will start the connection manager using the accounts that you've configured. And then the you know, thing goes green, go online. And there's nothing happening here until remotely somebody sends you a message. It arrives into the connection manager, and the connection manager emits a signal, new channel. It's a text channel, and there's a pending message in it which says hi. Um, so we've just been changing the interface of mission control a bit, and we've introduced some new concepts here um, to do with how uh, channels are requested and how they're dispatched. 
Um, so the first step of dispatching a channel in the new world order is to, first of all, give the channel to any observers. So this is basically a hook where you can plug in things that are basically passive. They don't modify the channel, but they do want to observe all the events on a channel. So quite obviously, a logger is something like that. Um, if you wanted to have a button that could terminate a, a phone call or a VoIP call or whatever, then you could have uh, something that just watched all the calls that were going on and then could terminate them, this kind of thing. So you can have different bits of UI that um, kind of monitor or, or interact with channels uh, while they're being handled by something else. So the logger doesn't have to have any UI, but it is given the channel and it can set up its signal handlers, check out what's going on, um, before it says it, it's all good to go. The other thing that uh, is important is that everything goes over Dbus. It is not proxied by these processes. So when the logger has been given the channel object, then it tells the Dbus daemon, okay, any text messages, give them to me, I'll save them. Um, it doesn't have to go through mission control just because it's been dispatched. Mission control basically gives the object path to reference to the channel, uh, to the logger process. So the next step of, of uh, the dispatch process is the approver. So whilst the channel is pending and hasn't been given to a particular handler, it's given to all of the approvers which are interested in a particular channel type. Um, in the case of Nokia, they've introduced this, uh, the thing on the side, the left-hand side is called the task navigator. Um, so there's a task navigator plugin which is responsible for delivering these notifications. Um, so it pops up a notification and then the user has to wait uh, and decide what to do. So they can click on it and the task navigator has pulled out the, mess the first um, message and shown it here. So finally, if you click that, the task navigator says, okay, let's carry on and mission control then does the final step which is to dispatch the channel to the handler. So during the normal life cycle of the channel, when it's being used, when it's up and running, then there's one handler per channel. And once it's been given to the observers, the approvers, it's been approved, then it's given to the handler. And that actually takes care of listening to the signal, sharing the messages on screen, acknowledging when they've been seen, and uh, sending messages by calling a method there. And again, uh, the chat UI does that by talking directly to the connection manager um, over Dbus. The fact that Mission Troll has given it uh, the channel is just by reference. It's just given the object path and the connection manager's bus name. And then yeah, the conversation continues. Um, so in GNOME, a lot of these um, uh, roles are taken care of by Empathy, which is a UI which is based on gossip, the GNOME XMPP client. Um, so we've taken that and we've basically uh, hacked it up so that it's uh, is a telepathy client rather than an XMPP client. Uh, we, we started off with a kind of plug-in into gossip, but we ran into a point where making the telepathy stuff work better would break the XMPP stuff. And you know, we kind of agreed to disagree and said, okay, we'll go off and play in our own sandpit. Um, and uh, empathy is a result of that. And you know, standard contact list, you, know, you can choose the present stuff. Um, there's the chat window there, the usual kind of stuff. So last year we merged in um, audio and video calling support into Empathy, um, which uh, is compatible by dint of being the same code with the audio and video calling on the internet tablet. Um, here's a variety of telepathy engineers. <laughs> um, so the audio and video calling works with a stream media channel type um, and uh, it's based uh, well, in order to do the actual streaming, we use the Farsight library, um, which uses GStreamer to take care of all the RTP, uh, all the networking, NAT traversal, all this magic, and Farsight gives us a simple API for that. And this telepathy Farsight is a very small library, a very simple API, just got a few methods, a few signals, and you just set that up, and it basically plugs together Farsight and the telepathy stream media channel. So once you've got the channel, you give it to telepathy Farsight, and it'll give you, here's the audio that's coming in from this guy, and connect up a source here if you want to send audio to this guy. Here's the video, that kind of thing. Um, another thing that we're working on is uh, multi-user jingle, or Muji, possibly, we haven't decided, um, which uh, is an extension to the jingle XMPP audio and video calling um, to support multiple people. So the idea is that you can actually join to a normal XMPP muck, so chat room, 
and people who are in there and exporting audio and video streams can discover each other's streams and can uh, you know, set up. At the moment, it's a, a kind of a fully connected set. Everyone in the channel talks to everyone else in the channel. But later on, we might add support for mixers and relays and stuff. Um, so another important part of telepathy is uh, this concept of tubes, which um, allows you to use telepathy not just for communicating between the people, um, but communicating between the applications. So the connection manager in most protocols, particularly advanced protocols like XMPP, MSN, this kind of thing, as well as doing the standard presence, avatars, icons, messages, this kind of stuff, calling. Um, it also has this machinery which is used for calling for peer-to-peer uh, -peer connections like file transfers and NAT traversals and things. Um, so the idea behind a telepathy tube is that you've already got this connection manager. You've already authenticated your contacts. You know who they are. They've approved you, blah, blah, blah. The server takes care of making sure that, you know, foo at bar.com is, is who you want to talk to. And the connection manager also has a lot of rocket science built in to do this NAT traversal. Um, so telepathy tubes are kind of a slightly lower level API that telepathy provides to just reuse all of that. So reuse authentication, reuse the NAT traversal, but then you can just send what you want. Um, so, it allows applications to exchange arbitrary data, um, and as I said, it allows you to do it with contacts, um, not IP addresses. So, a whole kind of swathe of, of pain and, and messing around with trying to set things up over the internet just disappears. You've got the people you're interested in on your contact list, and you can just click on them and, and start doing stuff. Um, so, we have two tube APIs at the moment. Uh, one of them is uh, stream tubes, which give you basically TCP semantics. You have a VNC server, you can export it to someone, they can connect to your desktop. You have a HTTP server, you can export it to someone, they can download files, this kind of thing. And the connection manager takes care of doing the natural traversal for you. Um, so you can set up tubes with a single contact or with a chat room. So in this case, we have a VNC server and we want to export it over the internet. Um, and there are multiple people who might want to connect to it. Now, ordinarily, you'd have to have the IP address. You'd have to give it to these guys out of band. They'd have to be able to see your IP address. They'd have to be able to connect to you. Um, it just wouldn't work. So telepathy tubes lets you use the connection manager to take care of that. What you do is export your socket to the connection manager, and the connection manager takes care of sending the offer to the other end. And then the connection managers on their end basically act as a proxy. There's a local socket that they can all connect to with their clients. And then in between, magic happens. You don't need to care, but ideally, the connection manager would do some natural traversal, make a peer-to-peer -peer connection. If that doesn't work, then maybe it'll relay through a server, whatever that protocol provides, basically. Um, so tubes were developed um, by Calabra along with uh, LPC in order to uh, enable their collaborative activities. So they're implemented in our XMPP and link local XMPP backend. Um, either when the, the laptops are being used uh, in a school situation, they have a server, we use the XMPP server. And if the mesh network is working properly, uh, link local XMPP, so you don't need the server. And that gives us uh, the, uh, the basic parts to do lots of exciting uh, collaborative stuff. Collaborative editing is the kind of uh, picture book example, um, which hopefully we can show you later on. Um, so another thing which I, I mentioned in the, uh, the abstract for this talk was that we've been working quite a lot over um, the past year or so to try and improve telepathy to make it slightly less daunting or confusing, this kind of thing. Now, these iron protocols all do lots of things, and so telepathy necessarily ends up with a big API to cover all of this functionality. Um, but that's not to say that we didn't make some mistakes. Um, I don't know if people like reading Dbus type signatures, um, but this was our uh, first attempt at a presence API. Um, so we had an array of u, which is uint, the handles, uh, mapped to a structure containing another uint, which is the idle time, which no one ever implemented, to an array of structures containing a string, which is the status name, and then the properties, of which there was only ever one defined, which was the message. Um, so this was great. You could have an idle time for each contact. You could have multiple statuses for each contact. Multiple statuses never happen. Um, but you could. Um, yeah, basically, it was epic fail. Really sorry about that. Because um, everyone was wanting to get presents, and it turns out it's actually really simple. Um, so we have an enumeration. Um, that tells you 
um, contact is online, contact is away, contact is busy. And you can always rely on that to tell you what the next thing means, which could be protocol specific. So you can define, uh, you know, out to lunch, whatever, uh, chatty, free to chat, wants to play games. Whatever the protocol defines, it can give you a, a list of these. And then finally, the message, which is blank, or there's a message. Um, some other stuff that we improved. Um, we introduced a new interface. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, then um, connections have a load of interfaces on them. Um, to deal with handles, if you have a handle and you want to see what the, the identifier is, you call inspect handles. Um, if you've given, been given a handle and you want to rely on storing that handle locally, you have to basically ref it and use the whole handles method. If you want to get aliases, you call the aliases method. If you want the avatars opens, you call the get known avatars opens method. If you want the capabilities, you call the get contact capabilities method. If you want the presence, you can, yeah, you get the idea. This sucks because you actually want all of these things in your UI. You've been given a contact list and you want to immediately show, you know, where are they? Are they online? What's their name? This kind of thing. So exciting new interface that we've added um, is basically a contact interface. Um, you can plug in all of the interfaces that you care about. Um, so it doesn't give you everything because you might not be interested in the currently playing tune or the geolocation or whatever. Um, so you just plug in interfaces you care about, you know, presence, avatars, aliases, whatever. And you put in an array of handles and it gives you back a nice big dictionary. Um, so this is the basis of this TP contact uh, object which we've introduced in Telepathy GDIB. And we're going to get the same stuff in Telepathy QT4 and in Telepathy Python. Um, and this is much less painful. You just make contact objects. They make one method called the connection manager. And for all the contacts you care about, you get back all the information you care about. It's great. Um, another big win here is that it reduces round trips. So if you were previously sending a whole load of messages to the connection manager waiting for a reply, you'd have to do that quite a lot. And you're supposed to hold the handles, make sure you hold them, and then request the extra stuff, wait for that to come back, blah, blah, blah. Um, whereas now you can do all that in one round trip. You send one message to Connection Manager, sends everything back to you. Much less painful. Um, in a similar vein, uh, initial telepathy uh, channel interface had a load of get methods. So you can get the channel type, you get the handle type, get the handle, get the interfaces. Um, so this meant that the first time you were given a channel path, you didn't know these things, you'd have to go and get them all. So all the client libraries would fire off like five method calls, wait for five replies before you could do anything. Bad. We've now moved these into Dbus properties. Um, so the Dbus spec actually defines uh, an interface, which is just a properties interface. You can get, you can set, and you can get all properties that are associated with a particular interface. Um, so get all lets you call one method and you can get all of the properties belonging to the channel interface. Um, so this is much easier for telepathy bindings because they don't have to fiddle around calling loads of separate methods waiting for stuff to happen. Um, so that, yeah, cuts down on round trips. But this also lets us do a new thing which we've introduced, which is the request interface or requestatron. We're not very good at naming things. Um, and this means that when a new channel is created, you don't just get those four things. You actually get a dictionary which tells you all of the properties about that channel. 10 minutes, okay, right, <laughs> nearly done. Um, and gives you all of the things about the channel that you need to know to, to deal with it, dispatch it, whatever. Um, and request also in terms of the properties which um, you'd like to see. So you say, you know, I want this type of channel, I want this handle, and I'd like to use this chat server, whatever. Um, this means that ideally you can deal with a new channel without any round trips because you've been given all the information. Or if you're being careful, make sure it hasn't disappeared in the meantime, uh, you can make one round trip. Um, so also over the past few months, we've started a, is that legible? Um, just go to git.co.uk and search for doc. <laughs> um, so the doc repository has a, a doc book skeleton, which we're fitting in at the moment um, to, to put some telepathy documentation in place. So as I mentioned, we're working on a new mission control API. Uh, hopefully it'll be finished over the next few months. We are constantly working on improving the GDIP and QT client bindings. Um, and we've got some cool stuff to implement, um, finish implementing file transfer in the XMPP backend. And we have a new tubes API, which makes use of all of the requesting dictionaries and stuff. Um, so there's a couple of links here, and then I'll spend the rest of my time, or possibly more than that, 
no, um, making demos. Um, so on the MIMO uh, tablet, then you can go to rtcom.garage.org and download the FD backends on the internet tablet. Um, on the desktop, the empty client that I mentioned, um, details on the GNOME wiki. Um, for developers, uh, this FD wiki is on freedesktop.org and the IT channel um, is full of lovely, helpful celebrity developers um, during the day, during uh, European time usually. Um, so if you'd like to jump in and start hacking, uh, Empathy is a good place, plenty of bugs there. Um, we need the, the, the back-end stuff is pretty solid, it's been around for a long time, um, but we need to improve the UI and the user experience and the integration into GNOME Desktop. So um, these GNOME bugs are a great place to start. Okay, so hopefully now, I can give some exciting demos. Um, so the first one is a new feature in the Telepathy XMPP backend, which is worked on by uh, Pierre Luc and Albon, who work at, at Calabra. Um, and it's a geolocation support. So XMPP servers uh, allow you to publish extra details about yourself that aren't just um, uh, aren't just your presence and uh, avatar and stuff. So you can actually publish extra information. And one of those standards is the geolocation standard. Um, so I've got these two contacts on my list, Alice and Bob, who have hopefully published their location to be in Australia. So we can check this map out. And there is Alice and Bob. I've learned not to trust conference networks, so uh, I have a local Java server. But this does work equally well over my real Java server on the internet. Um, yep, so uh, Bob is in Brisbane, Alice is in Perth, I hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> um, and I've got an exciting script here, which will move them to the far superior location uh, of LCA. So run that, and hopefully they will both, there we go, both jump over to Hobart. Um, I could fiddle around zooming in there. Yeah. So you can also get them their location in more detail in these dialog boxes here. Okay, so that's the first one. Um, thanks to Piero Canabon for work on that. Um, we've got two branches to the back end and to the UI, which we should hopefully review and merge pretty soon. Um, so the other thing that we finished just towards the end of last year was uh, file transfer support, um, which we've added a new uh, channel type to telepathy, um, and we've implemented in um, the Salu back end. Now the file transfer support has been implemented by a cast of thousands. It started um, like two years ago, and uh, Marco has worked on it, and Johnny's worked on it, and I'm probably offending lots of people by forgetting their names and not mentioning them. Anyone else who's worked on it, thanks. Lots of people. Um, so it's bands around, uh, Guillaume's working on it now, blah, blah, blah. Um, so Johnny implemented a uh, plugin into Nautilus, which is the GNOME file manager, um, Nautilus Send To plugin, um, which should hopefully allow us to send this exciting tube map to one of my contacts. So LCA test, this people nearby group is using Salu. So it's the link local XMPP. Uh, link local as in local host on my laptop. <laughs> um, LCA test is an exciting user who's logged in XNest over here. Um, so if I pick LCA test and I click send, then we are waiting for a reply from the other participant. Uh, so we can go down here. Here we have uh, LCA test. And there's a nice little paper plane coming in here. A robot would like to send you a file. Would you like to set the file? Yes. Save it on desktop. Ta da Whoosh. And there we go. So file transfer. Exciting new innovation for telepathy. And now uh, nicely integrated into the known desktop. And as I said, we're going to be working on that in uh, different backends. OK, so next demo. Um, one thing I mentioned during the talk is that you can use StreamTubes to export your music. So uh, DARP, the exciting protocol from Apple, which they keep breaking, um, allows you to share your music library. Um, some of this isn't mine, by the way. I don't like Amber. Um, <laughs> allows you to share your music library um, with another contact. Um, so the UI is a bit clunky, um, but this uh, dialog box should allow us to choose the test2 user, who is Again, the uh, the other desktop, um, and offer my exciting music collection. 
So if we jump over here, um, we get these slightly dubious blinking gears. Uh, we'd work on the UI. Uh, uh, an unnamed application will be started. So let's do that. Um, thankfully, I know it's with the box over here. Uh, we've got um, test one. So this is obviously not as exciting as having two computers. But um, I mean, you, I can show you that step, net sound if you want. But this is going from uh, my desktop, the rhythm box is being exported through StreamTube, which has been sent to my local Jabber server, which has come back to Gabel running as this user. One minute, OK. <laughs> um, and the music collection has been exported there. It's connected through the connection manager to the DARP server. And then I can play uh, exciting music. OK. Um, now, uh, if want some more demos. Um, Olivier, how many people went to the uh, Farsight talk yesterday? How many people would like to see the awesome demo? OK, so I'll hand over to Olivier, and he can show you that. <laughs> OK. This should work. I'm online. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, right. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where's BTV? So the demo is that we have uh, PTV, which is an awesome video editor, which uh, should run. <laughs> Edward. Hello. Mm, mm. streamer you can do it great so um, now we can make a telepathy call from here and then call my online contact here on my n 10 and uh, this is a regular video call it's not a tube so we're creating a um, a regular call which should at some point ring here on my n 10 hello ring Uh, the only codec on the NA10 is uh, H.263, but we're using Farsight, and Farsight will decode it directly onto here. And normally, we should be able to receive the call here. Hello. Am I online? <laughs> if the network works. Connection information. No, not wrong network. So, in theory, if the network worked, we should be able to record the call. But it's suspended, and I lost my, my network configuration. So, we can blame Matthew. Um, boop, 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 boop. You can do it. Why do you change IP addresses? Yeah, uh, network manager. It should allow me to set the static IP address on an ad, ad hoc network, not give me a random one every time. Uh, doesn't seem to. Does anyone have any questions while he plugs away at that? No? The improved slides are successful. <laughs> I actually have a question. Um, he can record the video. Is there any way that you could make it a piece of software which would stream video over the video conference call? Uh, yeah, that should be pretty easy. Um, because you can you can plug telepathy farsight into any GCM pipeline. So you can hook in whatever source and sync for the video that you want. Um, so you can mix in sounds or music or whatever into the call that you've got. You can send a file through the call. And you can save the call into a file, this kind of thing.
Yeah. Okay, thanks so much.